Okay, surely you've heard of the prehistoric snake that's nearly as big as the basilisk in Harry Potter. No? Oh. Strap in. Okay, when I think of Titanoboa serogenensis, I originally thought that that statement was quite a bit of an exaggeration. And it is a little bit, but not a lot. And also remember that Daniel Radcliffe was, you know, a child in that film, so. Anyway, we're gonna find all that out and more, including this thing's strength capabilities. So make sure you stick around for the whole video. But first, let's get into how this thing was discovered. In 2009, a group of scientists led by Jonathan Block discovered a total of 184 individual remains consisting mostly of vertebra within the coal mines of the Ceregion Formation of Colombia. Now finding out that these were snake vertebrae, they then used the dimensions of the vertebra to predict the size of this monstrous snake. And it was a big boy. Initial estimates showed the snake to be around 13 meters long or 42.5 feet, but then when skull material was found, it was shown to be a type of boa. So they scaled up those proportions and found it could have grown up to a whopping 15 meters long or around 49 feet. Keep your snake in its cage for 72 hours. <laughs> So what kind of environmental factors cause Nicki Minaj's favourite pastime to get so big? Well, let's take a look at the Serajion Formation. Serajion? I'm butchering that again, aren't I? This formation was deposited during the mid to late Paleocene, just 5 million years after the death of the non-avian dinosaurs. It was a hot, tropical rainforest with intricate river systems and life that wasn't too dissimilar to today's rainforest biomes, with fossils showing lungfish, crocodiles, turtles, and of course, snakes. In fact, fossils show that Titanoboa wasn't the only giant, since the massive Carbonemes is also known, which had a shell that was around 5 foot 11 long and it was also carnivorous. Now, gigantism at this time is thought to have been down to two main factors. The initial reasoning was likely the typical arms race that normally happens after a major extinction event, where new players to the game evolve rapidly to fill in the empty niches left by the animals that went extinct. Now at this point in time, mammals hadn't really gotten their momentum just yet, so it was mostly the reptiles that were getting big for now. Now these big sizes would have been accommodated by the much higher annual average mean temperatures of the region, which is thought to have been around 34 degrees Celsius. So out of all of these chunky chums, what did Titanoboa actually eat? Well, it was initially thought that this snake was feeding on crocodiles, but Jason Hedertel argued that it had some palate features more reminiscent of a pescivorous diet. Who knows? Maybe it ate both. And given its affinity with other boids, it would have killed its prey the exact same way as well. Not by venom, but by a nice death snuggle. Which brings us on to the most mind-blowing fact about this snake. Its strength. Now one of the largest constrictors still alive today, the green anaconda, can squeeze its victim with around 90 pounds of pressure per square inch. So when you put all of those inches that would engulf you together, it's the equivalent of a bus sitting on your chest. Now scaling that up to the size estimates of Titanoboa, you get around 400 pounds per square inch. Now, if that just sounds like meaningless numbers to you and you want an actual comparison, just go ahead and build a second Eiffel Tower and then put those two towers on top of your chest. In other words, this thing could sneeze and snap you like a toothpick. So at least it'd be quick. 
Actually, maybe we should introduce it to Nicki Minaj. <laughs> Anyways, if you did enjoy this video, feel free to drop a like and please consider subscribing. Please enjoy the aphidophobia I've just given you and I'll catch you guys next time.